M. Sleep. Slav. O O O O. What? Hello, dear people. Good morning. Here are Shiva and Jonathan. And we're just emerging from a deep, deep sleep that the Sandman gave us. Yes, I'm still tired. And all the sand in. Where does it come from? Yes, I would like to know. That too, yes. So today's topic is the Sandman. Or also known as the Sandman. The Sandman only takes care of the kids, I would say. So those who have just arrived in the Matrix. That falls to the Sandman. The Sandman. I never met him. Me neither. That seems good. Who is this man anyway? And where is he from? Where did the Sandman come from anyway? And why does he have a sack on his back? He has it on his back. Filled with lots of sand. Certainly sand. When you wake up in the morning, you have sleep in your eyes. Because the Sandman has thrown sand in his eyes. And that's what the wording says. Throwing sand in your eyes is always there to blind you. Or exactly. So that the view is no longer so clear. Who is now the Sandman is another question. The Sandman is of course a term, I would say, that downplays the whole thing and doesn't make it so scary anymore. Didn't you read something about this series of murders? Exactly. There are three different ways to somehow categorize the Sandman. One or four, even five. Like now, now, now no, six. Once, of course, the mythological Sandman, who is there to bring the dreams, to put sleep in the children's eyes so that they can fall asleep peacefully and the dreams can begin. Then there's the other version where the Sandman is a demon who claws the eyes out of children who are not well behaved and go to sleep. Then there was a series of murders in England in 1910. There was a man who had sand with him and he, he crawled into the windows, through the windows to the little children's bedrooms. Kidnapped her from there taken away, mutilated and murdered. And in the bedrooms you always found sand. Then there's the version, the latest on the children's channel, The Sandman, to cover up the whole series of murders. And so that the children, the kidnapped victims, are forgotten, The Sandman was introduced, while we still know today on television. Yes, that Sandman series that is always broadcast in the evenings for children. I don't know if it's still running at the moment. Maybe broadcast on the children's channel, the little sandman, dear little man, running around and then scattering a bit of sand. It may be that it's really true that this was an attempt to cover up this series of murders in the early 1900s, but I don't really know. The series of murders lasted until 1945. It was a very long and then there was the Austrian version of Sandman das Peck Mandel. The bad luck man painted bad luck in the children's eyes so that they could sleep well. Yes, and woe betide the child would not sleep well. Then the Sandman came and scattered a lot of sand so that he really fell asleep and lost consciousness. Are you the Sandman? No. That's not him. The cat. That's just one follower. 
so we have previously told a few stories about the Sandman and now we would like to present our interpretation of the Sandman L. Correct. Now comes our interpretation of the Sandman, as a guard, as a guardian of sleep, so to speak, you could say, or as a protector of sleep. Exactly. We define sleep in such a way that one just, so that the spirit falls asleep with the body. Exactly. Once you try not to fall asleep, which is a very exciting experience, you will find that you are becoming more and more sluggish, that the frequencies in the brain are getting slower and slower. Gradually you lose consciousness. Why is that? Who is responsible for that? So we believe that the Sandman is also an agent in the Matrix who mainly takes care of the children so that the children fall asleep properly. Of course, one can now argue about where the sand in the eyes actually comes from. The scientists, of course, have the theory of secretions that form from moisture in the eyes. But can we really assume that? And is the Sandman just a cover term for an agent who is only trying to somehow manage and enforce the sleep? Because it is important that you fall asleep and then no longer know that you are dreaming. So then, the lucid dreamer is actually the opponent of the Sandman, or how would you see that? Ah yes, you can say that. I mean, the goal is to stay awake or even wake up in the first place. We know the world is an illusion, it's a dream. Our life is a dream and the trick is to stay awake. And that is somehow prevented, I have the feeling. Because it's only when you try to stay awake, to stay conscious that it becomes very, very difficult. The nights when you manage to do that are of course very exciting and very insightful once you manage to stay in twilight like that. However, the lucid dreamer could really be an opponent of the Sandman. Yes, Sandman, try to become conscious. Yes. Sandman don't like to see lucid dreams. I could well imagine that. Especially those who enter a lucid dream directly from being awake. Exactly. Then there are the dream keepers. But we'll talk about that next time. About the other guardian species. And today it's all about those who want to prevent you from remaining conscious and so that you can see what's actually happening while the body is asleep. So we lie in bed and think about the day and get more and more tired and tired and also tend to follow the stories we perceive in hypnagogic states. And at some point it clicks and you're gone. And you're gone. Zach. And the next morning you wake up and think. When did I fall asleep? You have to imagine that you cannot define the exact time when you fell asleep. It does not work. One can only try. You can't say I was just thinking that and then I fell asleep. Or I was just in that state or whatever, and then I was gone. But I've already tried it with a lot of training, so it's only possible with a lot of training, so to speak. Not easy. It is not easy. And last night I just had a dream. Exactly. That's what I wanted to tell me once. Yes. And I was able to experience myself in another alternative reality. And Jonathan in the other reality researches mainly on the topics of dreams and sleep and has just made the topic his scientific research object, researching sleep. And above all, his goal was to cross the threshold of sleep. So you can imagine it like this. His assumption was that if he conquered sleep, he would never have to sleep again. 
so on a mental level. Of course, the body always has to sleep, but it never wanted to fall asleep again, never want to lose consciousness again. And that was his main reason why he dealt with sleep. And where sleep is natural, the Sandman is not far. I also wrote a blog article on the subject where I wrote down the whole dream. It's very long, I didn't really want to repeat it here. But anyway very exciting. You should take a look. On Matrix Blogger. Really awesome the dream and very insightful. In any case. And with that, of course, the topic of the Sandman came up between us and we thought about the Sandman, which it symbolizes. Of course, the Sandman is definitely not the little character from the children's film that hops around with a bag of sand, but you can probably imagine him quite differently. I assume so too, yeah, so I'm assuming it's some kind of being from another dimension doing something energetically, so to speak, to make us unconscious, right? Yes, from the fourth dimension. Maybe he just comes along and stands on the threshold between sleeping and waking and is just waiting for a favorable moment in order to somehow take action. You shouldn't take everything that we say about the Sandman so literally, you have to recognize the symbolism within and that's important. And we know that there are other agents who do their work in dreams and in normal everyday life in order to keep one or the other in the unknown and uncertain. We'll talk about that in another video. And the Sandman is one of them, even if it has such a harmless sounding name. I found that anyway. I got a very creepy feeling when you told me that. Your dream there on the threshold. It is quite possible that there is a kernel of truth there, yes, definitely, to conquer the threshold of sleep, so that from the point of view of consciousness one will never fall asleep again, is a very interesting goal. Yes, at least I think that consciousness doesn't sleep, of course, does it? Actually not anymore. Correct, the consciousness does not have to sleep. Only the body. But why do we fall asleep? Yes, exactly. And that's the big question. And we just think that the Sandman is not entirely innocent, at least as far as children are concerned. For adults, it might be a little different. I can imagine that there might be another entity that takes care of the adults more. As you can see, the veil is thin or dense, however, and the goal is to break it. Well, at least, we're working on that now and then. To bring awareness to 24. 7 to be awake, independent of the body. Which is difficult, of course, because you almost always run on autopilot during the day. Just being aware of that is difficult and then take it with you to sleep. Hallelujah. Correct. And I think the trick is to go to sleep really fully consciously. So. Fully concentrated and not getting distracted and really trying to catch the moment of falling asleep. A precursor I can imagine is waking up the next morning and thinking oh I haven't slept all night. I was kind of active and up all night. I guess that's kind of a precursor to staying conscious all night, but I think there's a lot more to it than staying really conscious and focused and focused, right? That's right. So I guess that's the challenge you can set yourself. Catching the moment of falling asleep. Or yes, if you are younger, you can try to catch the Sandman. Maybe you can catch him and then see the real face of the Sandman. Or just the entity or being that is responsible for the adults right now and favors or supports sleep. 
tries to protect sleep so that everyone falls asleep well. That was already the case so. When we were kids that the parents always looked into the bedroom and asked, well, are you asleep already? And then you often acted as if you were sleeping when you didn't feel like discussing with your parents why you weren't asleep yet. Exactly. Yes, it's probably something similar with the Sandman. Yes, one notices a bit of the parallel there. You write so much about it in your articles. Yes, well, it's worth reading. Anyone interested can read it here. And yes. We would definitely be interested in what you think about the Sandman. What experiences you had from your childhood. Exactly on the subject of the Sandman. What your parents may have told you about the Sandman and we find all such things extremely exciting. So that you can really put something together and maybe find out a bit more about this creature that we call the Sandman. I don't think the Sandman calls himself the Sandman. And who knows if it exists. Yes. It's like us. Yes, I was just thinking about that too. They also gave us a name and these are certainly not our real names. No, I wouldn't have called myself what my name is. My parents thought, let's take Jonathan. And maybe my name is completely different. Perhaps, where I come from, my name is different. And so it will be with the Sandman. For us, the Sandman sounds very trivializing. Yes. Cute, very cute. And he can't mean anything bad. Although the wording throw sand in your eyes already says it all. Exactly. Infatuation. So kids. Always sleep well. Always go to bed politely. Close your eyes and sleep and sleep. And then in the morning don't remember the dreams just wipe the sand out of your eyes and that's it. That's how the Sandman wants it. That's how the agents want the divine. Yes, I think that was it for the first time with our Sandman Themchen. Yes, exactly. Thank you for watching. Exactly. And until the next topic with the agents of the Matrix. Yes.